alike But I've heard the tender whisper of love In the dead of night And you tell me that you're pleased And that I'm never alone You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers far and Welcome. I'm so glad that you could join us today in worship. My name is Jeff and I'm one of the pastors here at Georgetown Naz. One of my favorite things to do each Sunday is to gather all the pictures of our families worshiping together. And so if you haven't done that yet today, take a second, pause this video, take a picture of your family worshiping together, and share it on Facebook or Instagram and use the hashtag GC in worship so that we can find it and share it with the rest of the church. Our children's ministry is still meeting. Pastor Michelle has put together worship services on Sunday morning and classes on Wednesday nights online on Zoom. So she would love to have your kids to join in on those times of worship. 
So reach out to her. She'll get you that contact information so that your kids can join in and all of the fun. Our COVID hotline is still open. So if you or anyone you know needs um, assistance by someone going to the store for them for groceries or to the pharmacy, we have volunteers who will do that so that you can stay healthy at home. Just call the number that's on your screen right now and a volunteer will reach out to you as soon as possible. In these uncertain times, I just want to say thank you for your faithful giving. God is continuing to bless his church. We have three ways that you can give. All that information is on your screen right now. I assure you that each one is safe and secure. As we continue today in worship, let's take a second. Let's pray. And also, gather your Bible. Um, put your smartphone on Do Not Disturb. And put away any other distractions you might have so that you may be attentive to what the Lord has to say to you today. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for this ability to gather together. Um, thank you for the technology that allows that to happen. Um, as we continue in worship, um, quiet our minds and our thoughts and open our hearts to what you might have to say to us today. Be with Pastor Mike as he brings your good word to us. And Lord, I want to say uh, thank you for your faithfulness to us. And um, may all these tithes and all these offerings that we are giving, may they go to build your kingdom, both in Georgetown and across the world, Lord. Thank you. And be with us in all that we say and all that we do. In your heavenly name. Amen. My mom is absolutely incredible. I definitely would not be who I am or where I'm at today if it wasn't for her. I'm thankful for her and that I love her more than I can express. Just everything that she's done for me is so much a part of who I am today. Call her on the phone? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I could do that. I would definitely do that. I'm gonna cry so hard. <sighs> I am just really happy that you're a part of my life and that you've been a huge mentor of mine. And we couldn't have done it if it weren't for you being willing to sacrifice. I just want you to know how much I love you. I never realized how much you did and how much you juggled until I had kids of my own. I love you a lot and that I appreciate everything you've done for me in life. Thank you just for everything. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. I'm glad you're here with us today. I hope all you moms are having a great day. Maybe your husband or your dads or somebody made you breakfast this morning, and I hope that you guys are enjoying that, maybe even while you're worshiping this morning. So I hope that your day is going well. Uh, I just want to say a couple things before we begin this morning. As always, I want to say thank you so much to our, our ministry team that we have here. I want to say thank you to Pastor Bo for all that he does to put our music together so that we can enjoy it. Even while we're distancing, we can be together in our music. I want to say thank you for Pastor Jeff. I want to say he is he's so good at putting all this together and making it to where we see what we see every Sunday and makes it look so good. And I appreciate the extra work and, and effort that he's putting in for that. I also want to say thank you to Pastor Michelle because she is doing a great job. I love her videos that she does for us before our service, and I also love that on Wednesday nights uh, she's ministering to our kids as a Zoom conference call. If your kids are not involved in that, please make sure to message her so that they can be a part of that. They definitely want to be a part of that. It's a great time for them to be able to connect and stay connected even in the midst of our isolation. And again, finally, I want to say thank you to you. You have been so generous and so gracious to us as a church, to your church. Uh, our offerings have been just blowing my mind, honestly. Uh, there are many pastors that I talk to that are, are trying to figure out how do they recover from this? How do they deal with the struggle of, of their offerings being so low and things aren't doing so well? When honestly, April was one of our largest months of offering that we have had. And I just want to say thank you. And so now as we're into May, we're in our new church year, we're headed to some new great things, and we just want to say thank you as we continue to... Uh, Love God and love people and serve the world around us. And we can do that best by your giving. Thank you for your giving. Uh, before we begin the message this morning, allow me to pray with us uh, before we begin. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that we can come together and worship you. We thank you for who you are in our lives. 
And Father, today we especially want to say thank you to all the moms and all the ladies in our lives who have just nurtured us and who have, have been following you and helping us to follow you even more. I want to say a special blessing on them today, and I pray that you would just watch over them and be with them. Allow this message, Father, as we go through it, not to just be for them, but also for all of us, Father, that we could learn from it so that we could be the very best person that you call us to be, so we can follow you and be your best disciple that we can be. Bless the word today, Father. Bless your message today. Let it bring glory and honor to you today in everything that we say and everything that we do. Father, we love you. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who makes all of this possible. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Well, as I said, uh, we just want to honor and, 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 and just really just lavish love upon the women in our lives today, the ones who, who made us who it is we are, because without them, I don't even want to think about who I would be without the women in my life. Uh, my mom was an amazing woman. Uh, she, uh, she, she was almost superhuman. She was a survivor early in her life. She became a provider. She was one who, who worked really hard. She was a caretaker and a protector and a home manager. Uh, she would work 40 to 50 hours a week in a factory and then come home in the evening and make sure that dinner was on the table, uh, make sure that clothes were laundered, make sure that homework was done. She was the taxi driver. She was everything in our house. It was amazing all the things she did. I don't know how she did it, and I just can't thank her enough. I honestly wish I could thank her today. I miss my mom. She passed away 25-some years ago, and I miss her with all my heart. And I just, I just want to say I love my mom, and I love all that she's instilled in my life uh, because of who she was. And let's just be honest. Uh, we married way above our head. My dad married way above his head. All of us guys did. I, I think of my wife, Lois. She's, she's a kind, caring, compassionate woman. She's the best mom, the best wife, the best friend that I could ever think of. When I see her in action at work, when she's at the assisted living center being the nurse, her compassion and caring for people is unbelievable. She is so thoughtful, and she goes the extra mile. She works hard uh, for our family and for her, those that are her patients. Let's just be honest. I outkicked my coverage when I found her. I was just glad that uh, I was able to convince my Miss America to be my wife. I was, I was reading recently of, of a survey that was done uh, by salary.com. Every year they, they try to put together a survey to figure out what it really costs if we had to pay a mom her salary, what it would really be. At first they, they set out some categories of some of the jobs that moms do. Here, here's some of the jobs that they listed. Moms are, are daycare directors, CEOs, a psychologist, a chef, a, ho a housekeeper, a nurse, a laundry technician, a computer operator and computer technician sometimes. They're, they're a facilities manager, they're janitors, they're transportation specialists, and that's just to name a few. And so then they study how, how many hours a mom does each of these jobs around the house. And then they figured out exactly what that would cost the family if they had to outsource each of those jobs. Well, based on, on 2019, the cost of being uh, the salary of a mom, the cost of being a mom is about $193,000 $193, a year. Whew. That's a lot of money. And, and that doesn't even include everything that I think moms do. Ladies, today it's your day. It's our day to honor you and to tell you how great you are. And, and we understand there's a lot of pressure on, on, on being a lady that goes into being a lady, a wife, and a mom today. And I just want to say, just relax a little bit. It's okay. We just want to take some time to honor you today and that hopefully by the end of the day you feel honored and encouraged and blessed and that you know that you are following after God the best that you can and doing the best job you can as a mom. And today I'm going to preach a Mother's Day message. And, and honestly, it's, it's a little bit weird for me to preach a Mother's Day message because I'm not a mom. I, I don't know what it takes to be a mom. I just get to watch what my wife does and how she's a job, uh, or how she's a mom and, and what she does in that job. And so I just, I just kind of look at that and I look at Scripture that tells me all the things that, that maybe go into what it means to be a mom. And today I just want to convey a few of those things for you. Now, I know just as soon as I mentioned I'm doing a Mother's Day message, there are some moms out there, some ladies out there that went, oh, 
I would rather have a root canal or do more laundry than, than listen to one more Mother's Day message. One more thing tell me what my expectations are, what I've got to do, and how I can't live up to that. And some of you are going, look, I would love to be the greatest mom in the world, but I'm too busy raising kids to do it. <laughs> and then there's others who say, you know, I don't need to hear another Mother's Day message. I'm not a mom. I wish I was a mom, or I, I don't wish I was a mom. I'm just not a mom. And, and sometimes it's awkward for me to hear those things, and so I just don't want to listen to another Mother's Day message. Well, again, I just want to say relax. It's okay. Uh, I, I think the message that we want to hear today uh, is, is one that covers all of us. And when I say us, I mean even the men. Because today's message isn't just for moms. Uh, dads, you got to wake up. Uh, it's also for you too. No daydreaming through today's message. Uh, what I'm going to say isn't just for moms, but it's also for dads and for teachers and for grandparents and for aunts and uncles and, and for people who, who live anywhere near a kid. You have a responsibility. We all have a responsibility. And I just want to... Uh, to encourage you from Scripture today how you can be the best impact to the next generation around you. Whether you're a, a coach or a teacher or, or a mom or a dad or an aunt or uncle or grandparent or even just a neighbor, I want to encourage you so that you can be the best person you can be to the next generation to teach them what it is they need to do, what it is they need to be in order to carry on our legacy of what God wants us to be. So today I want to share with you a, a passage from, from Scripture. Uh, it's one that you might be familiar with on Mother's Day. It's one that is commonly spoke on, on Mother's Day. It comes from Proverbs chapter 31. Now, the, the end of Proverbs 31 is a very popular area, especially in women's ministry, because it talks about all the great things that a great woman does. But I think there's a couple verses before, the, in the first part of chapter 31, that I want us to focus on a little bit today that might help, uh, help hear the words of a mom to her son of how she feels like he can be the best person he can be. And I, I think this is what it is it means to be a mom, is to pass on those kind of words to their children. And so hear these today, uh, starting with verse 1 of chapter 31. I'm reading in the New Living Translation. It says, The sayings of King Lumel contain this message which his mother taught him. So these are his mother's words to him. O oh, my son, O oh, son of my womb, O oh, son of my vows. I think that's her way of saying, hey, listen up. I'm talking to you. Uh, my mom used to have to do that to me quite a bit. And I think that's what she's doing. She's trying to get his attention here. And here's what she has to say. Here are her words of great advice to him. Uh, by the way, he's getting ready to be the king. She's now the, the mother of the king, and so she wants to help him become the best king that he can be. Here's her advice. Don't waste your strength on women, on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, O oh Lumel, to guzzle wine. Rulers should not crave alcohol, for if they drink, they will forget the law and, and not give justice to the oppressed. Alcohol is for the dying, and wine for those in bitter distress. Let them drink to forget their poverty, and remember their troubles no more. So according to uh, this passage, she is a mom who's wanting to pass on some great words to her son. And in the midst of those great words, some of us just hear the idea of, don't hang out with, with women that will ruin you, and, and, and don't drink a lot. Don't, don't get drunk. Don't stay away from alcohol. But if you think that's the point of what she's saying, I think you've missed the point. Uh, I think that's what the surface says, but behind what she's saying is even a tougher question. I think what she's really trying to get him to think about is, what will you do with the great power and responsibility that your position has now given you? I think that's one of the, the wrestles that we all have. Now, let's be honest, none of our kids are going to ever be royalty. Uh, most of our, our, our nieces, our nephews, our, our, any of our family are, are not going to grow up to be kings and queens, but someday, someday they will be teachers and they, they will be uh, uh, principals and they may be doctors and they may be heads of corporations. Uh, they, many of them will go get a college degree. Most of them will make more money than we do. Some of them might even get elected to office. And so maybe the question we should be asking them or we should be helping them to understand in life is, what will they do with the power and the responsibility of the situation of the position that they're in. Many of us have heard the, the phrase, with great power comes great responsibility. Well, I think King Lumel's 
mom is asking him, is saying to him, don't use your power to serve yourself. Don't use your power to, to get what it is you want and what you feel like is best for you, but think of the others around you, how your power, how your resources can influence those around you. See, the concern is that Lamel might build a large harem. It was common for kings in those days to, to gather around them a large harem of, of wives. Or, or, or that maybe he was... a. He, he would be prone to alcohol and drinking a lot. I think in Scripture of, of King David, one of the greatest kings that there was, but he ruined his career because he had an adulterous relationship with his best friend's wife. Or I think of King Solomon, uh, one of the wisest men in, in the history of the world, one of the wisest men in, in Scripture, but yet he was ruined as a king. He had 400 wives in his harem, and they led him astray. Uh, the king's mother is, is concerned about, about the use of alcohol and how it may be a deterrent for him to have a, a right mind and keep him clear uh, of making good judgment. He would forget some of the laws and decrees that he would make. He would, he would not treat people uh, the way they ought to be treated. He would not rule justly, but he would rule out of an impaired mind and an impaired situation. In verse uh, 6 and 7, she kind of uses, uses these verses uh, as sarcasm to kind of get her point across. Uh, she says, alcohol is for the dying and wine for those in bitter distress. Let them drink to forget their poverty. Let them remember their troubles no more. Really what she's uh, doing there is saying, uh, you need to stay away from this stuff because it will cloud your judgment. It will cloud your mind. And how will these things help you to be the best king that you could be? She gives him these what not to do's to begin with. I think that's her way of saying you need to pay attention to this, but she doesn't stop there. She moves on in verses 8 and 9, and she begins talking about here are some things you ought to do as king in order to be the best king that you can be. It reads, here's, here's her advice to him of what he ought to do. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those who who are being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and the helpless and see that they get justice. Scripture tells us, and I firmly believe, that when we exploit people, when we rule over them and, and, and crush them, it is a sin. It's, it's, it's a sin to take advantage of other people and to exploit them, uh, using our resources and our power and our position to, to lord it over them to get what it is we want. That is wrong. And when I think of King Lamel's mother and her words, I begin to think of, of another mother that I've heard of. Her name was Lillian Carter. She was the mother of, of, of former President Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter's dad was, was a large farmer, was, was, uh, worked a large farm in Georgia, Plains, Georgia. They had a peanut farm and, and taught, taught Jimmy how to work hard, but his mother, Lillian, was a nurse. He taught, she taught him how to be compassionate and caring to people. In the, in the days in which Jimmy Carter was growing up, uh, segregation was huge in South Georgia. Jimmy had a tough time dealing with this, but learned from his mother exactly what the response to segregation ought to be. His mother, Lillian, uh, being a nurse, always made sure to take care of the neighbors that were around her, the African-American neighbors who had no money to pay for health care. She took personal care of and watched over them, even though they could not pay. With that kind of background, there's no wonder why Jimmy Carter will go down as one of the very best presidents that the United States have ever had. His, his working with Habitat for Humanity all through his lifetime has been phenomenal. He's been a continual message of self-servanthood. He's been a continual message of what King Lamel's mother is trying to pass on to King Lamel, to take care of those who are oppressed and marginalized and poor. You see, I believe what, what King, Lamel was trying to pass, or King Lamel's mom was trying to pass on to him was that a woman who fears the Lord teaches her kids to serve those in need. The message that we can hear today from this passage is that a woman who fears the Lord, a person who fears the Lord, teaches their kids to serve those who are in need. 
And when I think of, uh, of those words, I think of the greatest king who ever lived. I think of a king who built his kingdom all around the idea of meeting the needs of the destitute and the widowed, the orphans and, and the marginalized, and taking care of those who are poor. Obviously, I'm referring to Jesus, King Jesus. Uh, at the beginning of his ministry, Jesus stood up in the temple. He was in his hometown in Nazareth, and, and he was in his synagogue on the Sabbath. And they handed him the scroll so that he would teach because he had been around the area and had been teaching and they were amazed by his teaching. And so they wanted him to teach them. And so here he is in his hometown, in his home church, speaking to his home folks. And here's the message that he gave to them. He, he, un, he un, unrolled the scroll and he found the place where it was written in Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said. For he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Now, when Jesus had finished reading that, he rolled the scroll back up and he handed it back to uh, one of the guys that was serving in, in the synagogue. And he sat down, and everybody expected him to give the message of the day, to give a great teaching, a great sermon. But instead, Jesus simply said, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus was here to bring the good news, the gospel of taking care of those who are oppressed and who, who, who are poor, who are widowed, who are orphaned, who are the marginalized in society. And that's the message he wants to direct to us. Jesus. Jesus was the kind of king that King Lamel's mother wanted Lamel to be. In fact, Jesus calls all of his followers all of his disciples, all those who call themselves Christian, to do the very same thing, to live the life that he's lived. In the last few weeks, we've been in the middle of a, of a series called Be. It's all about being like Jesus. The, the question at Easter was, do you like Jesus or do you want to be like Jesus? And Jesus is calling all of us to be like him. And in order to be like him, we have to live like him. The New Testament, James, the, the brother of Jesus, talks about religion this way, and he says, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is to do this, to look after the orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted from the world. But how can we teach our kids to follow that? How can we teach our kids to do that when, when, when we're so selfish sometimes and we're, we're enamored with the idea of, of using our strength and our power and our resources for us and not for others? The only way that I've found to be able to do this in my life is by not doing it by my strength and my power, but by doing it by following Christ through the power of the gospel. In fact, the gospel tells us this. Scripture tells us in Philippians chapter 2, Verses 5 through 11, Paul's telling the, the church in Philippians that we need to have the attitude of Christ, and here's what that is. He says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, instead he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a humble being, a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father." So moms, you want to be the best mom you can be? You want to be able to pass on uh, the same time of, of advice that King Lamel's mother was passing on to King Lumel? And then my, I want to urge you to follow Christ in your life. Have you placed your faith in Jesus? Have you, have you given your life to Christ? See, the relationship with God that he offers is free. And it's a free gift of life for all of us, given to people like you and me who, uh, who are lost without God in our lives. 
And that's the gospel. And once you've responded to the gospel and accepted Christ in your life, then you live out the gospel by using your strength and your resources and your position not to serve yourself, but to serve others around you, and especially those who are marginalized, those who are oppressed, those that our society kicks to the side. Now, moms, you don't have to be perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect mom. You don't have to be a super mom to your kids. You just have to teach them what really matters. If you want to be the best mom you can be, point your kids to Jesus. Teach them to follow Jesus and his example and to use their strength and their power and their position and their resources to serve those in need around them. Now, honestly, growing up, my mom, my mom wasn't a Christian. Uh, Going to church was not a priority for us. In fact, I don't even know what her thoughts were about God when I was young. But when I did finally start going to church, I was very thankful for, for some, some ladies in the church and some guys in the church that took me underneath their wings and began teaching me about Jesus and teaching me how to live like Jesus. They were my surrogate moms, and I'm so thankful for them today. They were my surrogate dads, and I'm so thankful for them today. And maybe that's your role here today for some of you. You don't have kids, or maybe your kids have grown and they're out of the home. And so now today, it's your role to, to be, be that surrogate for someone else, to take somebody else underneath your wings and teach them what it means to follow Jesus. Teach them what it means to be a servant, to sacrifice to use the power and the resources and the position that they have to serve others around them and not to just serve themselves. It's easy to serve ourselves. It's, it takes work to serve others. It takes the power of Christ in your life to help you look beyond yourself and look at others. So my prayer for us today is that as we celebrate moms today, that we would pray a blessing upon them, that they would be pointing their kids and their, their, their nephews, their nieces, their neighbors, their neighbor's kids to Jesus. That they would teach them how to serve by serving them today. Moms, can I pray with you for just a moment today? Father, we thank you today for our moms. We thank you for these great words uh, to, to, a, to a young king from his mother. Words of advice, of, of some things, some, some, some traps that would try to, to ensnare him and will bring him down, and some things that he could do to make him a great king. And Father, I believe all of us have those same kind of things in our lives. There are things around us, there are potholes around us, there are, there are things that want to uh, grab a hold of us and destroy us if we let them. Help us to be mindful of them. Help us to learn from past and learn from others uh, of things that we should not do. But I also believe there are great opportunities for us. Great opportunities to be your disciples. Great opportunities to be your man and woman of God that we would serve others and lead others to serve others. That out of our, out of our position, out of our resources, out of our, our, our whatever power we have, Father, that we would be able to use that for good for those who are in need. Father, I believe that's what it means when we say we love God, we love people, and we serve the world. That we serve those that, that no one else wants to serve. That, Father... We serve because we love you. We don't serve out of guilt. We don't serve to make points. We serve out of gratitude for the blessings that you've given to us. And I thank you today, Father, for the way that you have blessed us beyond measure. Help us. Help us, first of all, to accept you into our lives, to ask you to forgive us of our sins on a daily basis, Father and accept you into our lives and begin molding, allowing you to mold and make our lives after you so that we can be more and more like you in our life. Father, I pray especially for our moms. I pray especially for our ladies today that you would just give them a blessed day, that you would watch over them, help them to feel your presence, give them power as they, as they teach their children and those around them to follow you as they follow you. And Father, we will give you praise.
your son's name. Amen. Now, one of the things that I find that's amazing about Proverbs 31 is that at the end, in verse 30, all of this kind of comes to a, to a climax when it says, A woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. My prayer for our moms, for our ladies today, is that they would fear the Lord so that they could be greatly praised. Uh, let me uh, close today uh, with, with a blessing, a benediction from Numbers chapter 6. May the Lord bless you and the Lord protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you peace, mothers, today. Because I believe in a world like this, you need protected. I believe in a world like this, you need grace. In a world like this, you need peace. In a world like this, you need him to smile upon you and let you know you are his child today. So today, moms, happy Mother's Day. I pray that you have a great day today. And I pray that you would just continue to follow him and teach others to follow him and serve others along the way. Now, before we go today, I just want to uh, just give you kind of a, a quick note. As our government is starting to reopen, as states are beginning to reopen, we here in Kentucky are going to begin opening soon. Uh, we're gonna, they're going to allow churches to begin having in-person services in the very near future. But we are working as a board and as a leadership team here to, to put together a, a, a process and a plan of our reopening. Things will look different. Uh, we'll have to social distance while we're here. We'll have to make sure things are sanitary. We'll have to make sure that things are right and safe for everybody. We want to make sure that we are kind to everybody that's around us. We want to make sure that we're considerate of those, especially those who are immunocompromised. And we want to make sure that we care for everyone in our congregation and in our community. So with that end, uh, just know that in the near future, we'll be posting uh, different processes that will be on our website, uh, that'll be on our Facebook, that will be in places where you can see them so that you kind of know a little bit of what to expect so that you know when we get back together, everything will be good. So, as I always say at the end of each service, uh, so that uh, we can always leave with a blessing, go in the grace of God, you are dismissed. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love my mommy. I love her to the stars.